Hello, welcome back. Uh, here's another exercise. We're going to look at calculating an interval estimate for the unknown population proportion. So here we're looking at radar traps that they like to put up these radar traps where they're going to catch the most uh, speeders, right? People going over the speed limit. So in one location, uh, police officers said that 124 out of 200 vehicles were charged with speeding. So Part A, what is the point estimate of the population proportion of speeders at this location? So if I'm looking at P bar, so out of 200 um, cars that I've sampled, 124 of them uh, were caught speeding. So this gives me a point estimate of the population proportion of 124 divided by 200 so 0.62. So there's, uh, if in my sample, 62% of my sample were caught speeding, so that's my point estimate of the population proportion. Part B, calculate the standard error. So the standard error, again, so much of this, you know, we're just looking at formulas and we throw numbers into a formula. So this is P bar times one minus P bar over N. And so again, I have 0.62 times 1 minus 0.62. Divide that by our sample size, which is 200. And we take the square root of all of that. So let's get our calculator here. So there's 0.62 times, open brackets, 1 minus 0.62. And we divide this by our sample size is 200 and square root that and I have 0 0.034 0 0.034 so there's my answer for part B Oops. 0 0.034 good so we're just getting the ingredients here for our confidence intervals All right, the formula that we need for our confidence interval estimates P bar plus or minus this is Z alpha by 2 when we're working with proportions, remember this this is under that same category as using the normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution, right? That's why you've probably seen this formula before when we are looking at these uh, uh, approximations of a binomial distribution. This is a binomial variable, right? They're either speeders or they're not speeders. It's one or the other. So we're using the normal approximation, and so this is why we're always using the Z distribution or the standard normal distribution as our uh, source of critical values for these calculations. And so this is just that corresponding critical value for our level of confidence times the standard error. Same formula as when we were doing means, right? When we were looking at means, it was X bar plus or minus a critical value times the standard error of the mean. So the formulas are very similar uh, to one another. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let me get rid of this, and I don't want to confuse anything with that. Now let's get our 95% our interval estimate. So for part C, we'll do this down here. So our point estimate, this was 0.62 plus or minus. So we need to figure out this uh, uh, a critical value. So if we go to our Z distribution, Again, we're looking for a probability and then looking at the, the corresponding critical value. So if I'm do producing a 95% interval, so that's my confidence level. So one minus alpha is equal to 95. So alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And of course, for a confidence interval, I want those lower and upper values. So that's alpha divided by two is 0 0.025. So we look through this table and here I find 0 0.025 here. This is one we you've probably seen this one before. Won't be long before you have it memorized. So Z alpha by 2, I can be more specific, Z for 0 0.025 is 1.9 and 6. So our critical value here is 196. 1.96 times our standard error 0 0.034. Okay, and so our interval has 6.62 in the middle plus 
one margin of error. So 0.62 plus a margin of error, which is 1.96 times 0 0.034. So 68, let's call it 687. And our point estimate minus a margin of error, so 0 0.62 minus 1.96 times 0 0.034. So 0.553. So there we go. I, I am 95% confident that the true number of, or sorry, the true proportion of cars that pass this location who are speeding is between roughly 55% and 69%. So that's my interval estimate for that population proportion of speeders at this particular location, where I'm 95% confident. Part D, we're looking at 90% confident. So the only thing that changes here, I'll write out this formula again, the only thing that changes is this, right? This critical value. The, the point estimate of the mean does not change. That's still going to be 0 0.62 plus or minus. The standard error doesn't change because that's dependent on the sample that we've collected. So that's still going to be 0 0.034. But now we need to just figure out what is that new critical value for this, for this test. So if for now we're producing a 90% interval, it means that 1 minus alpha is 0.9, so alpha is 0.1, and so alpha divided by 2 is 0.05. So we want that z value for z 0.05. So now we look through this table and we find 0.05. Well, in this case, it doesn't actually exist, but it's right between these two values here. So I know that it is 1.6, so there's negative 1.6, and if we go up here, it's right between 4 and 5, and that's my second decimal, so that means that uh, my critical value must be 1.6, 4, and 5. Because, oh, I'm just a little bit in the way there. Let me write it down here. Negative 1.645 because I'm just right in the middle there, so that's why the third decimal place is that five. So there's our relevant critical value. So I can come back here, put this in, 1.645, and now for part D, here we can get those limits. The point estimate is in the middle of 0.62. So 0.62, the upper limit is plus, one margin of error, which is 1.645 times 0 0.034. So that's 67.6. And the lower limit is the point estimate minus a margin of error, which is 1.645 times 0 0.034, 56.4. And there we have it. There's our interval estimate, our 95% confidence interval estimate, and a 90% interval estimate. Notice that as our confidence level decreases, that interval estimate is getting a little bit more narrow, right? Because I can, I can be less confident in a more precise estimate, right? So as my confidence grows, then that interval gets wider, right? I can be 100% confident that I'm over here, huge, right? Or as my confidence decreases, I can be more precise, but as I try to become more precise, uh, there's a greater chance of error. So as that interval attempts to be more precise, uh, my confidence level decreases because there's a greater probability or greater chance of error uh, in that. And what do I mean by error? Well, here I have a 90% interval estimate that the true population proportion is somewhere between these two limits. So in this case, there's a 5% chance that it's out here, there's a 5% chance that it's somewhere over here, right? So my confidence level goes down, uh, greater 
chance of error. My confidence level goes up, less chance of error, so that interval is getting wider. Okay, so I hope that this helps. Um, should. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the calculations are I think a little bit easier than when we we're working with um, population means uh, sometimes it's just most of the time when I see students working on these types of problems they're they're problems with the calculator pressing the wrong buttons or something like this uh, but generally speaking when you've got the formulas put the numbers in the formulas the interpretation is often the, the most difficult part and that will just come with practice, I hope. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.